So with our partial fractions, uh, you need to find your common denominator first of all. So over here to the right hand side, I've just put out some uh, rules here that might help uh, to guide you through how to do our partial fractions question. So I'll just leave that to the side there. So the first step is to get your common denominator. Now you'll notice on these that your common denominator will always be found on the left hand side. So you can see what your common denominator is. It's basically given for us. It's when you multiply the denominators, which is your x plus 1, which is this one here, multiplied by the x take 1, which is this one. So I'm basically multiplying uh, the two denominators, and that's my common denominator. My next step then is to factor that into my fraction. So the left, or let the top lines of the fraction equal to each other once we sort out our common denominators. So I'm just going to write out my question here. So it's 1 over x plus 1, x take 1. And then it's equal to, and I'm now going to write out my two fractions again, but with my common denominators. So it's my x plus 1 times my x minus 1, x plus 1 times my x minus 1. So I'm bringing in my common denominator there. Now, I already have the a on the top of my first fraction and the b as the numerator on my second fraction. And basically, look what's happened here. On my first fraction, I have brought in the x minus 1 on the bottom. So if I bring in the x minus 1 on the bottom, I must multiply the top by x minus 1. And it's the same on the next fraction. I've brought in the x plus 1. So that means I need to bring in also an x plus 1 on the top. I need to balance out that fraction. Whatever I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. I'm now going to just multiply in my top line. So I'm going to multiply the a into my bracket and my b into my bracket. So that's giving me 1 over x plus 1 times x minus 1 is equal to a by x, which is ax, a by 1, which is minus 1a, and that is plus b times x and plus 1b, all over my common denominator. The next step now is when you add these two fractions together. So I'm basically just going to put them as one fraction. So it's ax minus 1a plus bx plus 1b all over my common denominator of x plus 1 times x minus 1. So I'm just adding the same fractions with the common denominator because it's like this question. If I had 3 over 7 plus 2 over 7, I add the tops and I get 5 over 7. So that's all I'm doing there. I'm adding the fractions together. And that is equal to my left hand side, which is 1 over x minus 1, x plus 1. If you look up at my steps here, I'm going to say step 2. Let the top lines of the fraction equal to each other. In other words, I'm crossing a line through the denominators because they are now equal to each other. x plus 1 times x minus 1 is equal to x plus 1, x minus 1. So I'm basically just cancelling out the denominators. I'm forgetting about it for how I'm going to solve my fractions. So therefore, 1 is equal to ax minus 1a plus bx plus 1b. I'm just going to arrange that, rearrange it. So I'm going to put the x's first, followed by my constant. So that is 1 is equal to ax plus bx minus 1a plus 1b. And I'm now going to just factorize out this x. So 1 is equal to a plus b times x minus 1a plus 1b. So I've just factorized out that x. I'm now going to just bring it up here uh, just to keep it all on the one page. So I have 1 is equal to a plus b times x minus 1b or 1a plus 1b. So just rewriting the left hand side, that's the same as me going, I'm bringing in the 0x, 
I don't have any x's on the left, but I'm bringing it in so I can match it up with the x's on the right. So it's 0x plus 1 is equal to a plus b times x minus 1a plus 1b. So see what I've done? I've just brought in that 0x because that means then I can match them up. So I'm looking at my x terms and then I'm looking at my constants. So if I look at my x's, I have 0x is equal to a plus b times x. If I divide across by that x or cancel them out, I get 0 is equal to a plus b. So that means, therefore, a is equal to minus b. I've just moved the plus b over to the left-hand side of the equals. Or I've subtracted b from both sides, basically. And then I come to my constants. I have 1 equals minus 1a plus 1b. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sub in minus b equals to a. So we know that from the first part. So I'm going to substitute that in. So it's 1 is equal to minus 1 times my a. And my a is basically uh, minus b. So I'm subbing in that minus b from here. And minus 1 by minus b gives me a plus b plus 1b is equal to 1. So 2b is equal to 1 over 2. Uh, or sorry, 2b is equal to 1, I should say. So that means that b is equal to a half when I divide across by 2. So that's the value for b. Now we need to just solve for a. So I'm coming back up here. So therefore, uh, since we found out the value So I'm just going to come back up here now. So therefore, since we found the value of b, so minus b is equal to a, so I'm going to substitute in my half for b, so minus a half is equal to a. And there are my two answers. I have b is equal to positive a half, and I have a equals to negative a half. And that's what they wanted us to do. They wanted to solve for the values of a and b. Thank you for watching another tutorial video from Tullamats. Make sure and subscribe.